Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Okay, our Roxy Creations Christmas edition. Today, I'm going to start on the prompt that is um, Santa. I just want to move my stand back a bit because I'm noticing it's wobbling. That's because it's just touching the table. There we go. That's a little bit better. Better. I'm a little bit rattled today. I don't know how much I'll achieve because we've had um, a bit of a incident on Friday afternoon at our house. I'll tell you all about that in a minute. I think it might help me a little bit too if I do talk about it. So let's first of all catch up on all the, the goodies of where I'm at and my plan for the Santa prompt. Now, the week last prompt was vintage image and I used a Santa in this one. So I'm not going to do a red um, stitchery, I don't think. I've got enough now to complete another signature. Uh, it wasn't the week before last. See, I'm really scattered. I don't know what I'm going to achieve in this video. It was birds. So I do need to show you my finished bird um, prompt. So let me just come up a little bit so you can see. So the cross stitch came together beautifully. Really, really happy with it. I crept in all of the crocheted elements to sort of frame the little guys. And then I ruched the chiffon... Is that the right word? I don't know. Around the um, border. And then I started with all the scattering of seed beads and little bits of tulle and little bits of crocheting, just scraps that were around the place. So really, really happy with it. And I decided not to go any further than the base. I sort of thought if I went too much further, it starts to get a little bit busy. I then stitched in these little words, just as little extra details. Really, really happy with it. So that is now ready to go in my book. Let me just flip this over. So I've got my Santa this side that will be stitched onto this page. I open it and then I start to showcase some more of my family's crocheting, which needs to be stitched into place as well. So I think this week for my red prompt, I'm going to finish this um, section of my book. So then Bird and Santa are all connected to this little signature like I've done with the other two because they're all finished as well. That's all stitched down, ready to go. And that one. So that's the plan with Red Book. So when you see me next, this signature will be done. You can hear Pepper in the background. And I think it's time to attach this to the front because I don't think I'm going to change that. So there's going to be a bit of maintenance this week on my red project. So that's the story with that. Now in the last video, I started working again on the cover for well, uh, the wrap. So I've stitched down all of those pieces that we did in the video. I've added some additional stitching. I seed stitched around this here. I want to put some beads in here now. That was a little piece of lace that was hanging around, so I stitched it in. I'm now to the stage where I can start embellishing like I have in this first section. And I discussed that I had a book that I picked up at a thrift store that was Letters of the Alphabet. And the plan is to put a J here, which represents my mum, Janelle, who passed away in February this year. So what I want to do with you guys is let's have a thumb through this, this needlework book. Now, I believe there was a name and an address of a lady in the front, so I just don't want to show that. Oh, a big thank you to the... The lady that tracked me down and let me know that in the video on Friday, the William Morris slow stitch panel that we've been working on, um, I accidentally showed the address of my property um, in that video because I, the doorbell rang in the middle of it and you'll hear the bing bong and I closed the video, went out, got the parcel and it was a parcel of lace that had come from a lady who was destashing. So I couldn't help myself and I opened it as I turned the video on and showed you guys. And um, 
yeah, the address was seen. So a very, 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 very kind lady tracked me down via my business, the, the Christmas stores that I have in Brisbane, rang the stores and let the girls know that they needed to tell me that my address had appeared on the video. How amazing. Like, I'm not sure who you are, but thank you, thank you. I hope you're watching this video and you are just an angel. So thank you. And I learned how to edit a video once it's been put up to YouTube. So thank you, Mr. Google, for telling me how to do that. Anyway, so much has happened in the last 48 hours, guys. You can probably tell I'm, I'm racing. I have had a coffee too. So what we want to do is have a flip through this book and find a J that I can then transfer onto my piece and embroider, which will be part of my homework for the next two weeks as well. So I'm just having a little little look so I don't mind that one because that could be a series of beads or French knots I couldn't find the J I was looking and looking it's here it's not a very impressive J is it no like if it was a Z it'd help fill the space maybe there won't be anything in here and I've got to create something what about that that's very fancy where's the J Gosh, I can't even distinguish the J. Uh, that's very messy. That's not very exciting. Not very exciting. Oh, Mum, your your letter is not really exciting. I might have to create my own. See how, how boring is that? Sorry, Mum, didn't mean to say that out loud, but it is. She'd say the same. She'd be like, mm, there's not much for my letter. That has potential. Mm. Keep going, keep going. That's not bad. But I could probably probably do something myself. Once I got the letter in, I could probably just do some embroidery around it. I guess this can just give us some ideas. Like, I love that. I don't think mum would have liked it. She would have thought that was too tizzy. But it certainly gives me an idea that maybe I just do the letter couched in. Like, get the fluidness that couching allows you. And then embellish with lace and things I'm sort of liking that concept where we use like a cord here's some in my scrap bucket here like I use use a cord couched it down to get a cursive J around you know I can sort of play to make sure I get that, that J into position. And then, it yeah, I'm liking that idea. I'm going to make it really chunky and bold and bouncing off the page. There's, I think, I'm thinking that's not a bad plan. Where's a post-it note that I can put in there? I don't have one handy, so I'm going to just mark that there. Let's keep going. There might be something else that sparks a bit of an idea. Oh, look at the size of these. Now we're talking. That would be a challenge to embroider. That would take me a month of Sundays. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Look, I must like that because I'm flipping through. I'm losing interest. See, there's a good cursive J. I think... Oh, look at all these. What a great little book. This was $2.00. And I thought, I'll just grab it. Even if you never do these exact pieces, it just gives you, gives you ideas, doesn't it? Inspiration. Okay, I think I've had enough inspiration. I'm thinking, oh, that's how they do monograms. They just build up on it. 
once the letter is done, they then build around it. There you go. Oh gosh, you could do anything. Look at the butterfly. Okay, I've wasted enough time. I'm pretty confident I have a spark of an idea. So I'm going to couch on a cord, probably this, because I'm really liking the fact that it's quite chunky. And then I'm going to embellish with beads and floral treatments to try and build up the J. So, okay, that's the plan. I will um, carry on with that, but if you're wondering, couching is pretty simple. It's just a case of laying down the cord and then over stitching it with a thread to hold it all into position. So it'll be a bit fiddly in the sense of getting the shape right of the letter. But I, I think I can pull that off with a little bit of mucking around. I will get a J on there. We'll see. So that's added to my to-do list for the week. We'll put that to one side with Red Santa book. Now, our piece within our blue. Thank you everyone for your kind comments on the little owl. Um, it took like three videos to get it done because there's just so much work in him. But yeah, I do appreciate your uh, comments. So thank you, thank you. Now, I know you're probably looking at that and going, gosh, Corinne, it's red. Don't do it, don't do it. Now, it's the only Santa I can find that semi sort of works. So my first thought is we have a go at disguising the red. So let's start. And the hat and the arm, look at Pepper and Bandit are woofing like crazy idiots. We disguise it with uh, laying over it fabrics to rebuild him in the tones that we actually want. And I think I can pull that off. Like the pom-pom is green, so I need to um, stitch that in some blue threads or some beads. His hat, I'll lay some calico, some calico scraps. Lay some calico. Sorry, guys, you can hear Pepper playing with Bandit. Let me just tap the window because they're being a little bit noisy. I don't know where they are. Yeah, they're being noisy, playing in my garden, so more plants are being trashed. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of calico to cover the hat. So I think I'll get my panel before we get too crazy here. Let's get this out of the way. And while I fiddle here, I don't know what I'm going to really do, but I do know I'm going to disguise disguise him a little and once I get him to the right tones for my panel I then we'll lay down a background insert him and do something tricky around it so I'm just going to put the background away for a moment <clears throat> and have a little play with this Santa and tell you what the hang happened I don't know how much embroidery I'm going to get done but anyway so Friday afternoon, about four o'clock, we decided to hop in our work van and go down to our stores because our teams needed um, my husband to get on a forklift and lift it down from high pallet racking some extra trees to restock them ready for a, a busy weekend, which I'm filming this Saturday. So this all happened for me yesterday and you'll be watching this tomorrow, Sunday. So Friday we headed off to the shop and while we were away, some grubs broke into our house. They kicked the front door off. First, one of the little turkeys, I nearly said a bad word, one of the little turkeys came down the um, deck to the front door and and uh, knocked 
And of course we went home. We'd left her probably about an hour earlier and then went back to the car that's sitting on the street, which happened to be parked in the wrong direction. So he should have been on the other side of the road, but he wasn't. He was pulled over to our side of the road. So he's facing the wrong way, which alerted a neighbor probably six minutes into the robbery that the car was sitting wrong on the, on the footpath. And she's then rung the neighbor who's directly opposite She's come down the, her driveway to check this vehicle out, this Audi, and they've just walked out with their first load. They had a box and we think something else, uh, probably another box, but our cameras on the property were turned off once they got inside because the room they went to and did the most rummaging was the room the security cameras are in and my husband has, you know, the VCR in there and... It's where you put your suitcases and just random stuff, camping gear and just consoles that your husband buys to play video games on and has so many of them, you wonder why they're all sitting on a shelf. Those That, that type of room. I really like the edge of that Santa hat, but I've got to get that shape right. And I think it'll need to be bent a little to get it right but I think that'll work that'll at least cover that red and start pushing back that where's the thread so anyway in that room they've grabbed a box that had all of the weekly envelopes that our staff put the till takings in you know so at the end of the day they run off the sales for the day on this strip of paper and the fpos dockets are all stapled together they write the takings on that envelope and they slide them in by week and then they give them to me and I archive them in a storage box. Well, that box was sitting in the room, so it looked like it would have had money in. Of course it doesn't, but we're not saying these boys are real smart. So they've grabbed that box and left with, um, you know, what's the month now? November, 11 months worth of weekly envelopes thinking they've got the mother load of cash because they don't thank goodness <clears throat> and um, they then just go into our bedroom and rummage around they don't find a lot because you know we try and keep everything locked away you don't leave valuables out and about but they did grab my husband's apple watch um, they grabbed a heap of my just costume jewellery. I've got a, a drawer under my bed that I've just thrown my costume jewellery in there. You know, just a lot of it I buy because I like the beads and I tend to break it down and use the beads in things. So I don't even really wear it. I don't wear a lot of jewellery anyway. <clears throat> so they've thought they've got the mother load of jewellery. You can imagine they're, they're back home in the crib and they're showing the girlfriends their haul. Look at all this jewellery. And the girls are going to go, Oh, you idiots, that's just four ninety five earrings and the gems are missing because Corinne's taken them for a craft project. <laughs> Love to be a fly on the wall for that conversation. So at the scheme of things, they really didn't get much. They did damage the door when they've kicked it in, but insurance should cover that and fix the timber work and that. It's just the, the ordeal of it. Now, to make a long story really short, this is where it gets really interesting. I think this is why I'm racing a little bit because we've been solving crimes all night and all day. And um, now I've got a knot in my cotton. I'm just stitching this down with a few little stitches. So pretty much two weeks ago, we had a break in three doors down. I'm in a cul-de-sac. So we had a break in three doors down and our cameras caught them entering the property where they had a stolen BMW and, oh, that's not letting me get through, which is not a bad thing. It's only a little invisible stitch. So I'll just start that again. So they've rammed, reversed into these metal gates at the front of their property pushed them open driven up the driveway cleaned the house out and they did very well on that robbery i hate to say 
They got a lot of very expensive jewelry and oh, sad. They're just so traumatized. They've got kids too. It's just, it's shocking, shocking, shocking. Anyway, so the street has been on high alert, as you can imagine. And we're all very much watching and we've always been a bit that way. Everyone's so good in our little area. And for weeks prior to that, there's been these random cars sitting on the main road leading, you turn then into our street, sitting on that road watching everyone. And many of our neighbours have confronted these people and said, you know, what the hell are you doing? And they've noticed notebooks on the front seat where they're taking down information. So it's all been reported to police. Roll forward to two weeks ago, we have the breaking down the street and they were that brazen that only one covered his face. And of course, the police recognised them, didn't they? Because these lads, these turkeys, have form. So four of them got arrested. Only two were on that case, but they managed to get four, which is fantastic. Now, we found out the name of one of them, uh, well, one of the neighbours did. So literally Sunday... I found out the name of one of these. So I went to Facebook and sure enough, there he was. And they'd even set up, oh, now I have to get up that hat. Oh, I shouldn't be, cro I shouldn't be, I don't even know what I'm doing, crochet. Shouldn't be doing anything today. Um, so I found the name out of one of these characters. And like everyone else in the area, we've all been looking at their Facebook. And on the Facebook page, he's got his mates with him in many photos, enjoying life, you know, heaven forbid. So roll forward to, and this is Sunday, I'm flicking through this kid and thinking, oh, well, you're in jail now, son. And he'd only just got out of jail. He actually cut his ankle bracelet off and then went and did the robbery a few days later. So back into the clink he goes. And um, I'm thinking, oh, look at all his mates. Aren't they living life high? You're an interesting looking little posse. So roll forward now to Friday afternoon. We're sitting on the highway, traveling between our two shops, delivering stock and getting ready to go back to Slacks Creek to help the guys stock their Christmas trees. And I get a call, Corinne, Corinne, your house is being broken into. They've only just left. And that was, of course, my neighbor who walked down the driveway and pretty much looked them straight in the eye. They've jumped in the car and they've taken off. So Police are being called by all the neighbours. We are stuck in traffic because we just continue on and just try and get home thinking, oh, my goodness, here we go. This is shocking. So by the time we get to the house, probably about 40 minutes later, the street's full of cars. There's three police cars. The detectives are here. They're already in investigating our neighbours. We gave permission for our neighbour to escort them, let them get onto it because, you know, sniffer dogs, the whole thing. We finally get here once we could get up our street due to all of our neighbours being ready to vigilante. <laughs> Some of them had golf clubs. It was pretty funny. Everyone's just so wound up. So we get inside and we see that they've emptied out the drawers and cupboards in my room and they've went into this like junk room, communications room, VCR, PlayStation, you know, all those those suitcase rooms we all have or cupboards and then they've also ran through the house and because it's just my husband and I we don't have kids or anything all the other rooms just don't look like they're lived in there's beds made of course but there's nothing in cupboards so they would have opened the drawers and seen no clothes so they've moved on hence it was so quick anyway um our cameras have catched, caught them coming down the deck. So we've got great face photos, bar masks on and things like that. So we're talking to the police and um, they are looking at all the video footage and anyway, probably 20 minutes goes by and I said to the two lady detectives, they're fantastic, I said, oh, you know that the house down the road, yes, yes, they were one of the detectives, yes, yes, yes. And I said, well, I've been looking at the the gentleman, we won't call him a gentleman, that did their crime, his Facebook page. And I've just seen the video footage myself and I think 
at least one of these photos shows our boy, our gentleman, which isn't a gentleman. So long story short, I hand him and show him, go through Facebook and say, him, he's, he's on our deck. And then the lady, she goes to the other detective, that's so-and-so, they knew him. So phones started going off between all the police and it like it just suddenly really ramped up. And so I'm flicking through and I'm like, there's the other one. So long story short, we had to get the footage from our video camera up really quickly. Um, the police got it all within uh, an hour or so and we haven't heard what's happened since. So I'm assuming they paid him a visit, but I don't know for sure. Maybe today I'll hear. Who knows? But um, just goes to show these smart, smart, smart people are you uh, bragging all over Facebook about a their lifestyle, their activities? It's just, oh, I just can't get my head around it. But anyway, I need to let it go. It's out of my hands now. The police have got everything they need. So yeah, there you go. That was my Friday afternoon. What a lovely way to finish the week. Seriously crazy so we've covered his hat and very quickly it's disappeared so let's get another piece of calico and see if we can cover the shoulder and then I can bring in a blue or something and we make his suit blue to match So this is a really good way of when you've got the perfect piece for something, but it's the wrong colours. Have a go at disguising it. So we're just going to patch over his shoulder. I might have a play with his hat too and make it lacy and or crocheted or let's jazzy up our Santa. I must say, if I, I do apologize to anyone if my story then has upset you in any way because you've had a similar thing happen. So I do apologize and I hope I hope it doesn't bring back horrible memories for you because it is it is horrible. I feel quite blessed that I got away with very little stolen or damaged. It could have been a lot worse because these people are grubs and they don't care. I've had two other break-ins in my time at different houses over the last 30 years. The first one was uh, they were in the house for two days helping themselves to everything and made a hang of a mess. And even when we got home from our short Easter break, I walked past one of them as he was coming across the street to re-enter and do another load. But I was coming out of our house because I was frantically looking for my little dog at the time because he was missing because everything was open. So I've come out of the little house. We're in a, like a little cottage I come out of the house, was on the footpath about to cross the road, yelling out, Jake, Jake, where are you? You know, trying to find this little poodle. And this ute pulls up in front of me, this cretin hops out, crosses the street, well, past me, and then he's twigged that I'm there. He's walked two metres to the left, to the right of me, onto the footpath. By then I'm on his footpath and he's on this footpath and he says, rude word their home and then he runs back to his car by then I've heard this sentence but still at the top of my voice going Jake Jake where are you and there was a churchyard across from our our property so I'm now in their car park starting to work out am I going to go around the church around their hall he could be here is he in the garden you know my head's focused on the little dog and I'm like, hang on a minute, I just heard a sentence that seemed to be relevant to me. 
And I turned, by then he's back in this utility and he's speeding off down the street and he had his number plate all bent and buckled and so I couldn't get his number plate. So we think he was returning for another load, <clears throat> is our suspicion. And then the second one was at another house and we'd gone to work and we come home and they had knocked the street, door knocked the street to find out who was home and who wasn't. Of course, we weren't. They then just entered the property. They took my jewellery box, which I'd left out in an obvious spot because we'd had a Christmas party the night before that I attended and I wore a couple little bits and pieces that I, you know, a couple of bracelets and hadn't put it away in a safe spot. So they just picked that up. They picked up my keys to my car, lifted the roller door and stole my car. Then they proceeded to drive that vehicle for three weeks up and down around Brisbane using my gateway toll bridge thing. So using my money to bip. So we could see they were gallivanting and then we eventually got a call to say that the vehicle had been burnt out and found in some bush. So they'd given up on that vehicle. So yeah, they were pretty, pretty bad. So this one, we're fortunate we didn't lose a lot of property. Okay, I think I've covered his shoulder enough now. So let's just finish that off. I think this will work. I was going to have a go at making a Santa from nothing. And this morning I was like, oh, I just, I just don't, can't. <laughs> I think it's because what's all happened. So I just need some mindless stitching where I don't have to think too hard. Santy's already there and I can just layer in, you know, the bits and pieces. Now I'm wondering if I can maintain the stamp look. I have pinking shears, but they're not real sharp. So if I do do this, it'll have to be me pinching it out. I think if I'm patient... I can pull that off. So I maintain the look of a stamp. That'd be really good if I can pull that off. Already it's looking different, isn't it? Because the red is disappearing. Okay. Yeah, I think this will work. So if I get rid of the bulk of the red, I guess if it doesn't look right, let's say I spend a bit of time snipping away at this to get that red out of there and it doesn't look right, what I might do is give up on that idea and just use some lace to give it a embellishing around the frame which I'm thinking I might do because I think it might be more fun. Let's see if we can get another little bit of red out. It would be nice to make it look like a stamp, mind you. I think it might work. We'll see. I'll fiddle with that. Some more. husband sitting in the lounge room going through video footage with a neighbor because we believe there was a car well we all watched it because we were aware that this car was in our street earlier in the day and they were sitting out the front of our house and for probably five minutes and then this woman gets out of the car and brushes her legs off. It looks like she's like eaten something and she's got crumbs all over her. So she stood outside the car and she's brushed those crumbs off and then they've left. Well, that was noticed by neighbours and we all went to investigate and, of course, they, they left and I just 
before I turn the camera on for you guys, I showed my husband the Facebook pages that I had shown to the police. And one of the photos in there is a lady. And as soon as my husband saw it, he goes, that's the woman that brushed the crumbs off of her feet. I'm not convinced. I'm not quite convinced as he is. So he's now with the neighbour who was also involved in that viewing earlier in the day and he's also convinced he goes yes that's her she's similar frame similar build so because we've had so many cases of cars being found to be watching our area over the last month probably two months we're now thinking this morning that that car that came say about 10 o'clock in the morning was a lookout and probably noticed the rego of our work van down the side of the house because it's not in a garage has made a note of that rego like they were doing in the previous story I told you where you know people were found to be sitting in cars on the side of the road with notebooks taking down regos we reckon she's gathering information just driving around, writing regos down. And then as we've left later in that afternoon at three o'clock, we've probably driven past. Now, this is just me guessing. I have no idea. Maybe we drove past. We'll call it a cockatoo. Cockatoos in Australia are birds that sit around and they notice a lot of things and they're very quick to announce to their fellow cockatoos that there's an opportunity or a threat or, a, you know, they squawk. So we'll call our lady in the morning a cockatoo. We think that she's gathered intel, maybe the rego of our van. She's then passed it on to some other cockatoos, maybe sitting around in streets as you leave our suburb. Like there's a, a main road out where there's a school, so there's just cars there all the time. So let's say there was a cockatoo sitting near that school at four o'clock. Later that day, we've driven past. They've just checked their list and go, Van lives at such and such. Because the earlier in the day, a cockatoo told them that the van is now on the road. There's a good chance they're not home because they've literally driven straight down the street. You can see this stolen silver vehicle with these lads in it pull up with a couple wheels on the footpath, directly outside our house. So they knew our house. They were coming for our address. One comes in, knocks on the door. Of course, no answer because we're not home. And they know we're not home because they saw the van go. And then he's gone back to the car and said, lads, they're not home. He's jumped into the driver's seat, ready to drive the vehicle. And two additional boys have hopped out and proceeded to kick the door in and ransack, ran, what's the word? Ransack the house. So that has just dawned on us this morning, only because my husband noticed a photo on one of these boys' accounts and said, that's the woman. So he's in the process of getting that footage of the red car doing a U-turn and pulling up and sitting for a bit and then this lady hops out and dusts off the crumbs and um, we'll upload that to our police file and maybe we can take out a couple cockatoos who knows isn't it crazy i would rather be sitting here concentrating on this little santa with you guys enjoying this instead of my, my head churning on it all oh goodness me but I must say this is working I told you you mightn't see anything too creative with me today this is going to be a bit of a mess of a video I think my head's not it yeah I like that that's going to work guys so more red gone and I think if I maybe even get my ink and just 
age the edge of this a little bit that might disguise any little threads that are left but I don't think they're going to be noticed so we've maintained the look of this stamp I'm pleased I'm able to use another little Santa from this panel of fabric I've got one in the red book from the week before last or not you know the prompt before last the Christmas image. How brazen, how brazen are these people that they rob a house three doors down two weeks ago and the same circle of acquaintances, four of them are in jail right now, but the same group come back to the same street and hit us again. Like, you know, when you hear of a robbery in your street, you go, oh, well, they'll, they'll leave the area. They won't come back. They'll... Uh, that just gives the police more information, really fresh information. You know, they're so stupid. Oh, goodness me. You guys are giving me a counselling session here, even though you're not responding. <laughs> I'm getting it out of my head. I think I need to. Nothing like slow stitch to have therapeutic benefits, hey? I know a lot of you enjoy my little chitter chatter. So I hope, I hope this doesn't upset anyone. Because unfortunately, this is the world we live in. This is the real world. But we're going to move on. We're going to let the police do their thing. And we might be in luck that we have some more arrests. Hopefully we get a phone call today. And they've retrieved some of my property. Be good to get all that, that box of business paperwork back. Because that's, you know... It's got no intrinsic value, but it's we've got to keep our paperwork for, I think, seven years in case ever the tax department want to do an audit. You've just got to keep everything for seven years in Australia. So that box missing is a bit of a pain. I'm sure the tax department would understand. Once you produce a, a police file number for your case, Imagine if they found that at the house, like, doesn't that finger point them to our property? How do you explain that, son? And how do you explain all that cheap, nasty costume jewellery that's lying on the coffee table? Missing beads. <laughs> oh, dear. You imagine that jewellery comes back and I've got to prove it's mine. And the only way I can prove it is I go through my slow stitch projects and go, see that pearl there? That came from that pair of earrings. Oh, you know, I've just thought of something. Our Christmas tree prompt that we did. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I've just thought of it. See that? The matching earrings have been stolen. So if those earrings come back, I'll be able to match this. This was a hairpiece that I wore at a friend's wedding and I had matching earrings because uh, I was a bridesmaid. So, and I've stitched it in here and the thieves took the earrings that match that piece. There you go. Huh. See, we can link it to my embroidery. Isn't that funny? Goodness me. I hope you don't mind me just sitting here snipping this red fabric out of our image it's not very boring so the background what I'll do is I'll just piece together random pieces from the blue fabric and some pieces from um, some packs that I've got from Rachel so I can have some of those beautiful hemps and linens and cottons and some laces and so that will be pretty straightforward I will stitch it all down and then add some decorative stitching on top, 
you know, the standard that we do as we build our backgrounds. Then I'll position our little Santa here, stitch him down. And then I will work on his shoulder and his hat to um, bring in some form of fabric into the image to make it look like he is three-dimensional and his costume has is like wearing a blue Santa suit. I might stitch his fingers a little bit and his face, but I don't think I'll need to. I think that will blend okay. It's not going to look odd. I think I'll focus on his hat and shoulder. I might do a bit of stitching in his beard. I didn't do that on the last one. I, I sort of did seed stitch, I think, around him as my bit of embroidery. I'll probably do that again. That really helps the piece blend into a background. So when we catch back up in the next video, which will be next Saturday, I'll show you how this sort of came to be. I'll have a play with that J. And get that worked in. And I will do a little bit of work in the red book and finish off that one particular signature with some stitching, just joining it all together. Um, I need to have a think about my spine too. I want to do tabs and I do have some fabric torn sitting in amongst the red book pages that's ready to go. So I, I don't know if I'll get time to do all of that, but we're getting close to sort of forming our books up because there's not many prompts left. So we could pretty much now guess the thickness of our spines. So I'd be pretty confident that I could leave enough space now and get the tabs into position. I'm loving it. This is really working. It's tedious, but it has has worked. Doesn't it change the look of it? With that red gone. I well, do apologise for not seeing much creativity here. But I think by now... Those who have been following me, you know how my brain works creative wise and you sort of probably can guess how I will build my background up and then start looking for morsels to decorate. I did have a thought with this Santa that around this stamp I could build some foliage up. But I'm not sure. I do really like the border that I built around the birds. Not so much the ruching because that's too much thickness for my little bunting. But I really did like how those crochet doilies crept in on the in image. Like brought the boundary in. And I wouldn't mind having that style of work on my bunting at some stage and I am running out of prompts coming so maybe we use this sand prompt to bring that sort of treatment onto the bunting and that'll help remind me that in the red book is um, a similar sort of treatment around the little bird so I might even do that because I do have squirreled away some really pretty pieces of crocheting that I haven't used yet. I'm sort of hoarding them a little bit. So maybe I use, use them to creep in around him so that you're looking through to him. That'd be fun. Maybe I do that. Trying to keep the buntings very different to each other so that each day as you reveal the advent calendar, you're sort of looking at a whole different type of embroidery. So 
I might do that. I'm nearly there. How boring for you all. But this is a counselling session for me. I'm getting it out of my head and I'm getting Santa back into my head. Going to some friends' place, our very good friends, for dinner tonight. The daughter's moving house, so all the lads are going to help her. Our van is going to go and help her. And I'm going to take some needlework and I'm just going to sit on the couch with my mate while all the boys go and lift heavy furniture and I will work on my Santa. Okay, so now I've got a hang of a mess here. Let me just get rid of these red dot things before we get them everywhere. Okay. Come back here, Santa. So there he is. So what I'm thinking we might do is, where's my bird? See how we've got this creeping in here, this crocheted border? I'm thinking I might do a similar thing with um, with this. Now I've got a couple lying here on the desk. They're not as good as some that I have squirreled away. So for example, how long have we got? We've got a few minutes, so let's have a little play. At least I'll know if, see even that piece in there, how interesting is that? We were doing a Christmas tree that would make a great great star okay so there's one I know I've got prettier ones but we'll just have a look through my box of tricks here and see if there's any any close and handy here's another box of tricks that might be better doily elements but I think these are like full doilies that's interesting and some of these are ones I don't want to cut up see that one there that's from my family. That needs to go in the red book to be preserved. Look at that. It stretches out. Yeah, that's got to go into that red book. Don't think there's much here. We'll just have a little flip through. If there's anything I spot that might just send me down a rabbit hole. That's another one from my family. That one there. Yeah, I can see on that one where an aunt has repaired it. Okay, I'll bring it up to the camera. See that? She's repaired it with a heap of little stitches. Isn't that nice? I might pop that to one side. Maybe that should go in my red book journal. What else have we got in here? I don't think there's much else. That's a little rectangle. Pop that over there. Be good to have some different shapes of doilies in my red book. That's another one from an art. Look at all the stitches. Hmm. Random piece of lace. Nothing there, nothing there. It's down in here. Oh, okay. This is another piece that I love. That there. Don't know its story. It came out of a grab bag in a in a shop. It was a collar. And I've already used a little bit on another project. I wonder if... See the little flowers in it? It's machine made. It's not 
you know, handmade, but it's just a very interesting piece. I might pull that out. Maybe we can frame Santa a little bit. That's some hand crocheting from an art. I probably should get that out and work that somewhere into the red book. You can see where her threads finished there. She was doing something. I have used a little bit in another project, so that probably should be a little morsel preserved. What else have we got down here? I think that's probably it. Okay, well, I've got some pieces anyway from the box of goodies <clears throat> that could be considered as part of my background building up. So I do like that. I, I like it because it's got our rectangular shape already. But whether it suits or not, whether it will work. But it would be nice to capture that. I honestly don't think it's anything old or... Maybe it's off of a collar from the 70s or something like that. I, I don't know its history. But that could be something. Another thing is these pieces are good because it gives you shapes that can be utilised, these flowers. So my idea I had where I build flowers around him so he's nestled in something could be an idea. And there's enough of a florally feeling here in this piece that I could deconstruct this into as many elements as I can and then build around and then maybe find some doilies that suit better than this guy to also build in there. That would be, that would be fun. Where it's cut I'd be pretty confident that I could disguise those snips. So that's got potential. That's sort of getting me a little bit, a little bit excited because it's a bit of a challenge. See, I'm bouncing back. I'm coming back. I was thinking a, a quick, easy stitchery, but I've debriefed, I've vented, and now I'm feeling like I'm back back in the world of lace and trims and all right I'm gonna have a think about this so we've got a couple options it will either be this it'll either be something incorporating this to get that square edge and then it goes crazy on another side or something or I'll go along with my bird idea where I creep in and frame him with multiple doily treatments which I do want to do on a piece so I'm going to have a think about all that tonight um, in the meantime I've got some more family treasures that I will work into I've got a piece of paper stuck behind there that's all the police report numbers and oh goodness um, these pieces have to be worked into got a really big version of this and I thought oh I'll never get that in the book because it's just huge look she's done a little stitch see that there it's a tiny little stitch around that edge oh goodness me mm. gosh so I've got some more treasures that I'm going to include in my book I really need to go through my stash that's in the cupboard pre-doing this world of embroidery that I've been gathering for years and make sure there's not some treasures in there that need to be pulled out. I think from memory I may have even done that because some of these pieces may have come from, come from there, like that one there. That was one that an aunt has started but never finished. And that's all I've got of it. So that's got to go in. It's a bit discoloured, but that doesn't matter. And it's broken there. But she was obviously on her way, on her journey. So got to keep that. I think there's a, a lady. You know when they were crocheting the ladies with the skirt and they have a bonnet? I 
think that is ah oh, no I've already I've already used it yeah I think I have hold that thought guys yeah I have so in my in a project that I started a few years ago before all this come along I had started a red book which is just pieces of embroidery exactly what we're doing now and there was this lady that was crocheted by where is she can't see her maybe it's not in this one gosh there's so much work just in that I like to keep this for when I travel I just grab it with all the colours that suit that piece and um it's just red. It's, I don't have to worry too much about having a missing colour, you know, if you're going somewhere. This, it could be in this one. Here. This was created by an aunt and I've attached her there so she's got her forever home. I think there's another one of these kicking around. I need to probably find it and then bring it into the Christmas book so then it is safe, you know. Yeah, I'm positive there's another one. I'll see if I can find it. All right, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Thank you for listening to me. And um, sorry you're not getting too much of creativity here. Like, look at that. It's pretty pathetic, really. But I think we've got a plan. Hasn't he changed in his image just by pushing that, that red back? And if that goes to blue, say, turkey work, and get rid of that green it'll really sell the story that you know we're changing it okay look after yourself stay safe and have a great weekend and i will chat to you all in the next video bye for now